Hello, Radius Boot Campers. This is Danielle. Day two, still no burpees needed. We're going to be covering email marketing today, but you can also see another helpful tip is you throw on a jacket or some nice looking top and nobody knows that you're wearing yoga pants underneath the bottom half of this screen. So find the silly joys of working from your home office. Today, we're going to help you get even more virtually automated with Radius Bob. So let's dive in. Today, we're covering creating templates, mass email, day triggered marketing, automated workflows, sending directly from the lead in the client file. So much to cover. But first thing we need to do is check if our SMTP is set up properly. If you are the account owner, you're going to go to settings and then you're gonna to go to email, columns, calendar, and other settings. If you're an agent, you do not have access into this section anyway, so I will show you how to do your setup in a few moments. Scroll to the bottom, and you're gonna choose send email using your custom, custom SMTP server. Click activate. If you have Gmail, connect with Gmail. Office 365, connect there. Any other account, you'll have to type in your credentials. If you need to look them up, go to the Help app, search for those articles, so SMTP. Click on that article for the email setup. Scroll down and you'll see the configurations. If you do not see the configuration, feel free to send us a conversation and let us know who your email provider is and we'll find it out for you or guide you through how, how to find it. If you are an agent, go to account, my information, and email. This is where you will set up your SMTP. It's not enabled for this account because this is a, an account owner uh, demo. Let's go back to information though, because we do need to make sure that the email that you're setting the SMTP up for is the same one that's in your user profile. So make sure that you only have one email address associated with each email profile. And each email profile needs to have their SMTP set up properly. Now let's go and look at some best practices for your email marketing. We have this article in your help app. It's called Tips for Email Marketing, Improving Deliverability. Tip one, set up your SMTP. You've already done that. Tip two, train your server. So if you start by sending out smaller batches of emails, people are more likely to receive them and open them, then you're considered more trustworthy. So therefore, Try to do it in small groups or direct email messaging, et cetera. Tip number three, write clear and specific subject lines. Too many catchwords like invest now or save big are potentially catchwords to go into your spam or to go into your leader client spam. Personalize your template. You can use the snippet code that we have within Radius so that way the leader, the client's name, their coverage type that they're interested in, their carrier and product that they have set up with you. All of those details can be really utilized in these templates to customize this experience and make them feel like it's one-on-one -on -one type interaction. So it doesn't feel so marketing heavy. Tip number five, make your emails relevant. So sending them date triggered marketing based off of their date of birth, their renewal, effective date, etc. Making your workflows relevant to where they are in the process of being from a lead to a paid up and renewed client. All of those things are going to help you have those open rates higher. Tip number six, have an unsubscribe option. We already have that for you. Any email that is sent out as date triggered marketing, mass email, automated workflows, any kind of automation that we have within the system. All of those already will have the unsubscribe feature added on. So you don't need to do anything with that. 
Just know that it's there when you send it out. If you send a direct message from the person's file that will not have an unsubscribe feature because it's considered a one-to-one relationship and therefore doesn't require the unsubscribe option. Now let's see how to build a template. Go to Drips. This is where all templates are stored regardless of what kind of marketing it is. You'll see here that we've got some pre-populated templates. We've recently updated our email builder. It's great, but we wanted to keep the templates that we've already put in your system and we're gonna keep them in there. So you will see two different kinds of templates. Let me just show you quickly the old template where it has this builder here, some pre-populated stuff for you if you wanna play around with that. And then the snippets are below. So leader, client, name, first name, last name, or the agent details. This is pulling from your account my information profile for the assigned agent. So you've got all these options. Any custom fields you have are below. So that's the old builder. Let's look at the new one. Click on add email template. So I'm going to give this template a name of, um, let's do food bank because this feels relevant right now. So maybe for food bank in a certain state. So let me do California. And we'll say resources, mm, let's do local food bank resources and donations. And then we can say from name, so you can type in your company name or you can use those snippets, again, the agent name. So the agent's name displays and then we'll do agent email. Even if you're a single agent, I think that this is a good thing to do because then you have the ability to change your email and account my information and you don't need to go through and change every single template. In a mass email scenario, I would not BCC yourself. That would be a lot of email. So I would keep that for maybe the quote follow-ups and things like that. You can even BCC your team leader if you wanted to see the, um, have that person receive the email for any time that you send out a quote. Let's make this template available to all users so they can send it directly from the leader of the client file. Um, only admin users can edit that, so that's available for you. Here we have the content, the rows, and the settings. So let's scroll down a little bit so you can see all these options. Let's first go to settings. This is the basic stuff. So here we can widen the content area width. We can set the background color. I usually like to keep it pretty simple, except if it's a monthly newsletter or something like that. But here you can make this dark green and then you can use the color picker to move this little circle around so you can get different colors. If you want the content area transparent or if you want it to be a lighter color, um, you can do that. The default font, the link color, all of that good stuff. So that's in the settings section. The rows allows you to build out a kind of format for this. So if I liked this because it kind of looks like a logo and then a text section, I can drag it here. If I scroll down here, I might also just pull over this one or maybe another single row. And then you can see here, if I hover over it and click on this, it will give me a little navigation thing so I can drag it further. So if I want to keep moving these around, you just need to kind of click in here, hover over, and then you'll see that little navigation to pull content from place to place. The important thing within this to remember is when you see this drag it here, it does mean that you've got to drag it there. If you tried to place it over here, it just won't work. So that's the most complicated part of this. Now go to the content section. Now we can start populating content. 
So let's first drag over an image into this first content area. Again, drag it here and then drop it. We can browse for our file. Let's go into this folder. And I can upload here or I can just insert images that I've already uploaded. So I'm going to hit insert. And now I can go back to content and drag over some text. Oop. And so now I'll start typing, maybe um, checking, checking in on your family's needs. Hello, and then you can actually utilize this merge tags. So this new builder calls it merge tags rather than snippets, but if I click on here, I'll see that leader client first name. So hello first name, and then comma. Our company is pairing with the local food banks to help our community. If you need any resources, you can find them below. Or if you're able to donate, please see the link to help your community. Something like that. This is a very basic thing. So then you can use those merge tags again to utilize the agent details. So again, the assigned agent name. And then I'm going to hit hold shift while I hit return. So that way it doesn't double space that for me. It's a weird HTML thing that just will not go away. So you have to hold shift while you hit return. So you single space things. Not sure why, it's just how it works. Um, assigned agent phone, shift return, another merge tag, and I'm gonna put in their email. Assigned agent email. There we go. Okay, so we've set that up. Now let's click on these content options again. And so I can drag in images and buttons and fighters and all these wonderful options. So let's pull in a button. Now, if I click on here, I can change this button to donate. I can look on the right hand side and change the color. I could change the color of the text as well if I wanted. And now I'm going to put in a link here. So let me go here and grab this link and paste that URL. So now if they click on that button, it will go to the right place. Then maybe I can go in here and then look at find food. So this is the pantry locator. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna add in some more content. So let me drag in this other image that I've grabbed from that site. I'm going to again browse and I could upload this file or I can, I'll just have it in here. So I'm going to hit insert. Again, you're going to want to go down to this action and paste that URL so that way it can link properly. I can also add in my social media options. So if I click on to this, I can enter in my handles. I can delete what I don't need. And then in this content again here, maybe I wanna be funny and add a GIF. We all need a little laughter right now so we can search for GIFs with Giphy. This is a free thing for you. So maybe um, we're going to work from home. So that's a cute dog. Dogs are a good 
thing to post into your content because they're adorable. Okay, scroll down and then you can keep on dragging content. You can add GIFs. You can add videos. If you add a video, you'll need to add the URL. So here it says add a YouTube or Vimeo URL to automatically generate a preview image. So let's grab one from Radius. I'm going to hit share so that I can grab that code. Copy. I'll go back here and paste that URL. And then it will give me that preview. I can also change the play icon so that way it can be different. So you've got tons of options as you can see with this. Now I'm going to save this template. Now I'm going to send a sample to my email so that way I can see how it looks and make sure and make sure that I've spelled everything right and so on. You can also copy any templates so that way you don't have to build them from scratch each time, which is helpful. Now let's see how to utilize this email. Let's go to mass email. For this, I would send it for leads and for clients and I'd send it to everybody. Or I could send it with a specific state. So for everybody in the state of California, they would get this message. It will tell me how many leads and clients would receive that message based off of that criteria. And I would choose the template that I wanted to send. So Food Bank California. And then I could schedule it for now or for a specific time. So maybe I wanna deliver it tomorrow at 9 a.m. and I would hit schedule email. If we go into drips, below the templates is where you find date triggered marketing. Add a marketing plan. This could be for birthdays. We would send it to everybody on their birthday or on their effective date. You could also send 180 days before turning 65 or 90 days before their renewal date, maybe 10 days after their effective date, and so on. So this is a way for you to schedule date-triggered emails based off of birthday, 65th, effective, and renewal. We also have automated workflows. In settings, you go to automated workflows, click edit. Let's add a workflow. For this example, let's talk about how to maybe market to your high risk people, like so high risk clients maybe. You'll stop the workflow if it no longer matches criteria this would be for clients. Perhaps you've created a tag of high risk, high risk clients. So that's the trigger. So the workflow name, the criteria for who would receive this, and then you'll save it. Then we can add actions for sending them an email or a text message or adding to a call queue. So let's do send a text message, maybe minute one or day one, you can do minutes through years. So minute one from when I set them as having a tag of a high risk client, we'll send it to the leader, the client. And again, we're going to use those snippets. We're going to say hi, first name, and send them this message saying, um, please let me know if you have concerns on your insurance coverage at this critical time. We're here for you. And then maybe your company name or the assigned agent name. and then scroll down to the bottom and save that action. Then you can also set up 
a day two, so add another action. And this is when you can send an email to the assigned agent, the leader, the client, a specific agent, or even a specific email address. So here we can select this template and save that action. So you can keep on adding as many actions as you want to this workflow. So that way their emails, text messages, tasks, everything can be created within the automated workflow section. To trigger that workflow, remember though that we have to select it as a tag of client, sorry, clients with a tag of high risk clients. So to trigger this, you would go to clients. You would look through and see who you think qualifies. So maybe these three people. And then I'm going to bulk update them and add a tag of high risk clients. And I'll hit submit. Now, if I go into that client, on the right hand column, I'll see the pending workflows that are related. So that text message and then the email. We also have in settings, appointment reminder emails. You would again create that template in the drips, and then you can go into appointment reminders to add a reminder for a specific kind of appointment. And you can say X amount of time before the reminder time or when the reminder was created. Usually for email, you'll send it when it was created and then you would have an appointment reminder email sent to them that has the location and all of the details of the meeting appointment. And you'll send it to the leader, the client, or to the assigned agent. You can also do that as well and hit create. And then a lot of people will also send a text message before the reminder time. So maybe two hours before they'll send them a message again using the snippets for the appointment date, time, and location that are found below here. So tomorrow we're gonna to go through the best practices for using automated workflows in depth. So we'll cover more than we did today in that section, but this is how you can utilize these features. The last thing I should show you is in the lead or the client file. If we click on their name, you'll see send email here. So long as you've got their email address filled out in this contact information, which is in this information tab in email. Then you'll be able to send them an email. You'll select the template. You can edit it and then it will track that email through the system. So if you go to notes, You'll see what emails have been sent and if that email was opened and read. So here we see that this email was sent out based off of this workflow. So it date and time stamps everything for you so that you know what goes out and when. If you wanna send them a direct message with more information, you might wanna click on their email. It will open your email program and then, and you can go to your account, my information section, and go to what the tab called Dropbox is. So you'll see your personal email Dropbox is here. So if I'm emailing that client directly from your email program, I can BCC that Dropbox email address and it will push this whole email into the notes of that client. So that way I can track all of the information that I email them and if they email me back and I add in the Dropbox again in a response to them, that whole email chain will be pushed back into their notes. 
there are specific tutorials on each of these steps, but we wanted to just go in more depth into all of the features that you have available for you within the email marketing of this system. So that is a wrap on this one. And we'll see you tomorrow for using automated workflows. We'll go in more depth with that, including emails, text messages, tasks, and more. So keep us posted as you have questions. Please submit them on the Help app. And we will talk to you soon. Have a great day. 